start by praising Allah Ta'ala. As it is his right to be praised, we ask for his peace and blessings of Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu his family, his companions, his forefather and brother in prophecy, and all those who fall in his footsteps, Allah make us amongst them, Ameen. Our relationship with the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is a very complex one. He is, as we all know, the greatest of creation, the beloved of Allah Ta'ala, Habibullah. He was sent to us by Allah Ta'ala with the message that if we were to follow, if we are to follow, it will guide us to what is best in this world and what is best in the next life. It will guide us to eternal felicity. It will bring, it will fulfill all of our hopes and dreams in a way we cannot imagine. He is our guide, our role model, and he is a person that no matter how much we were to think about and contemplate and reflect about, we wouldn't be able to truly understand or come to know who he was. There is a story where a man, a tabiri by the name of Awais al-Qarni, he, he lived in Yemen. He lived in Yemen and he became Muslim while the Prophet was alive. But he was unable to, he was unable to go and actually meet with the Prophet because he was busy taking care of his mother. Who's busy taking care of his mother? So if he were to have left and gone to Medina, a city very far from where he was living, you know, who would be left to take care of his mother, who he cannot bring on the trip with him? So he stayed in Yemen. He stayed in Yemen with, with his mom, mother, and he never actually met with the Prophet Sallallahu while he was alive. Prophet Sallallahu however, knew about him. Even though they never met, he knew about him. And he told his companions, his close companions, and their armors and their Ali, and all them, he told them, he was like, there's a man in Yemen. His name is Awais al-Qarni. He looks like this. He has his attributes. He wants to meet me, but he can't because of his mother. He's taking care of her. And he told the story of him to them. And he told them, these are people who are promised paradise. People who, not only did they fight in Badr, they fought in Uhud. A hadith came down from the Prophet I'm guaranteeing them the paradise amongst the 10 that we call the 10 Mubashirim mid paradise. They're guaranteed paradise and they're companions of the Prophet Sallallahu Not only the companions, they're his closest companions. Not only that, they're family. So Umar Bakr Siddiq was his father-in-law. So Umar Bakr Farooq was his father-in-law as well. So then Uthman was his son-in-law. So then Ali was his son-in-law. He tells them, when you meet this man, ask him to make a self fought for you. So they meet one day, the Prophet Sallallahu after, after he passes away, one day, so their Umar and Ali are on a trip. They're, um, sorry, not on a trip, they're in Mecca. And they hear about a caravan that came to make Hajj from, from Qarn, from the place where Awais al Qarni is from. They go to the caravan. They go to the caravan and they, they address the people and they ask them, they're like, Is there a man amongst you all called Awais al Qarni? And they look at him, they're like, No. And they're like, Are you sure? It's like, No one by that name. No, there has to be. He looks like this, his traits are like this, he's like X, Y, and Z. And they think to themselves, and like, Oh, that's a stable boy. He's with the cows and the, you know, the horses and the camels. He's taking care of our livestock. You'll find him out in the desert somewhere. So he came with the people of his, of his, of his village, of his uh, area, to make hajj. And because of his, you know, his low status amongst them, they just deemed him a simple stable boy. Even the Prophet of God وسلم, told his greatest companions, seek istighfar from him. They go to meet him, right? They go to meet him. So now Umar is Ali And they ask him, are you always al Qarni? And he's like, no. He's like, are you sure? Like, yeah, I'm not him. Who's asking? Right? And he, you know, no, you're definitely him. You're, you meet these traits the Prophet some told us about you and everything like that. And then they, they introduce themselves that they are Umar bin al Farooq, the man, the companion of the Prophet, and Ali bin Abi Talib. Radwan Allah alayhim jami'an. And so they look at him and they say, the Prophet told us when we were to meet you to make us to, for, to ask, for us to ask you to make us to for us. And so, you know, he's shy and abashed, but he makes us to fought for them. And he tells them, in addressing them, he tells them, he says, this Prophet of God, the Prophet Sallallahu you guys were with him for so long, but you guys didn't even come to know his shadow. This man of God who was sent to you all, the Prophet, you all, you too, he's addressing Sina Umar and Sina Ali. 
two men who we know were from his family, and he spent years with him, his closest of companions, eventually became his, his ambassadors and his khalifas. He says to them, you guys did not know, not even the shadow of the Prophet After all that time he spent with him, you barely even knew a shadow, let alone him as an individual. And they both looked at him and said, you're right. They said, you're right. This is the Prophet of Allah Ta'ala. And they cried and they said, we didn't even know his shadow. After all that time we spent with him, this, the greatness of this man, the greatness of this man, we didn't even know, not even his shadow. And so the Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he is just that. He is someone who we come to remember as a congregation once a week. And you remember him several times a day, hopefully in every instant of our lives individually. And we think about what he brought to us, how our relationship was with him, and ultimately all the reflection we can do, all the reflection we can do, all the reading we can do about him, all of it is what? It won't even equate to knowing his shadow. And so but one day a time will come where we will inshallah ta'ala meet him in the next life and come to know him personally. And even then, if his companions are gonna get to know him except for his shadow in this world, how much of him can we know even in the next life? There's a beautiful set of verses that, um, that one of the pious wrote talking about an aspect of our relationship with the Prophet Really summarizing the most practical aspects of our relationship with him. He says, he says in this beautiful three lines, he says, he called us to the truth, the Prophet ﷺ. He called us to the truth with the truth that was sent down to him by the most merciful, and it was the best of callings. We accepted it. We embraced it in complete submission to what he came with. We heard it and we obeyed. We heard it and we obeyed, yani based on wisdom that we see with our inner sight and guidance from Allah Ta'ala. And then he prays in the last line, he says, Oh Allah, make us, O oh Allah, make us steadfast upon the truth and on guidance. And that Allah take us, take us, yani, give us a good ending, take our souls. Tamam, and make us of the take us take our souls while we are on the best of amongst the best of peoples and communities, the best of ummas. And so this aspect of the relationship that we have with the Prophet, وسلم, understanding that what he came with, despite all the you know the, the incredible nature of this man and the complexity of our relationship with him, what we do know is one thing. He came to us with a message that if we were to submit to completely not only will it lead us to, to, get, to get, getting to know him more and better and eventually meeting him in the next life, it will grant us something even beyond that. And that is the pleasure of our Lord and his eternal mercy and eternal abode in Jannah. So we ask Allah Ta'ala to give us just that, to give us tawfiq, make us people of Iman, Islam, Ihsan, and Arfan, to make us people of Qiyam and Sayyam, Quran, to take care of all of our needs, all of our familial needs, our communal needs, to guide all of our family members who are not Muslim to Islam, all of our family members who are heedless to the Sunnah Prophet We ask that for ourselves, everyone who's attendance, who's listening, and who will listen to this in the future. Alhamdulillah.